back with another episode on this tuesday the 6th of october i'm looking forward to this one you know i was fiddling with the idea of doing pre-recorded as opposed to live so sorry if this is a little bit uh short notice for you guys but you know what i can't do this pre-recorded thing no more it just feels odd it feels strange um you know uh, to feel that there is you know at least a few people watching it makes a big difference i go into performance mode you know it's uh it, i've gotten used to the live thing ever since the lockdown hit so here we are with another episode a live episode thank you all for joining i'm sure you you will uh, eventually pile in once you realize we're live but um, i'm looking forward to this episode we have a very special artist, um, a band that I had never been familiar with until recently. I have discovered their music, obviously, with the assistance of um, uh, Warren, who has booked this this episode. And and I must say, I'm I'm a ratty old mo. I'm looking forward to it. I am here and joined by uh, Mr. Justin Swart of the Amblers. But before we get to Justin. Let's hit a subscribe on that YouTube page. Follow us wherever it, wherever we are. And uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, papagehouse at gmail.com. But remember, most importantly, click that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. You see it down on the bottom of your screen. Let's go, baby. Let's get this listener listenership up because we got some order, awesome artists just like Justin of the Amblers. So let's get this party started. That's where we're going. Back in your lives, in your ears, and in your face. Welcome to episode 65 of Papa G's House. Yeah, we're getting up there, but without further ado, I don't want to keep him waiting too long. We have Justin of the Amblers here. Justin, welcome to the show, dude. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me. Privilege <laughs> is mine. 100 percent man i must say um i don't know if you heard what i was saying in 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 the, in the intro there that but i i, I w wasn't familiar with the amblers until recently and man i i i've just listened to the full radio mo uh, album and and it is just it's just a joy to listen to my man so i'm looking forward to this chat yeah thanks so much me too i mean those are really really kind words yeah we're fun making that album yeah for sure for sure and i mean i had a look at uh, birds and the bees on youtube and and you've got some some more uh, and ratty old mo i think was on a, 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 a music video as well so first things first who is justin swart and where i mean i can tell from the music that that you've been doing this a long time and there's a there's a certain maturity to the music so before we get into the amblers, I want to know all about you, my man. I want to know uh, what, where you, where you come from, what your musical influences uh, are and stuff, and and we can get to the integrity a little bit later. Sure. Okay. Well. Wow. That's a huge question, but <laughs> I've got all kind night, of, man. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. I suppose to sum it up, I mean, I I I come from Cape Town. I grew I grew up in Durbanville, and. Uh, yeah, I come from a, a super music family um, in the sense of just, you know what, music all the time. My dad was a drummer. My mm. grandfather was like a proper Buddha or Kiss, like, oh, um, yeah. which is uh, Buddha, Buddha music fascinates me, bro. It's it's the, the one style of music that I don't know about other people, but but me, I I just can't find the beat. I don't know where where do you lock into? I, just, what, I, I don't know, but I, I, it's fascinating, absolutely sure. fascinating. But yeah, so I, I grew up in a really musical family. I mean, I I, uh, I had a, a, 
a tough childhood in in the sense of I, I struggled for a really really long time with drug addiction okay. um with heroin addiction yeah and it took me a long time to get out of to get out of that if sure. if you know what i mean and i and i think that even as a musician and the reason that i bring it up is i think that you know as a musician that was the thing that i had to fight against the most mm-hmm. you know because it was the one thing that um i don't know that kept kind of getting in the way if that makes sense i sure. mean you know yeah it just well it's when when it takes away happened. from your priorities and that becomes your priority i guess yeah sure i mean you don't really have a choice constantly you know in in survival mode and so you know i really needed to sort out that section of my life first before i really could take on anything career wise um yeah you know as sure. a musician but i mean you know that was you know that was my life and and mm-hmm. that's my story and then I and, kind how, of, and how long ago was that if you don't mind me very, asking i've been clean for a long time i've probably been i mean Unlike, I suppose, other people, I, I have really been counting the days. It's it's many, many years. It's more than 10 years. I mean, I okay. think 2000, 2004, 2004, which would make it like give or take, you know, 16 years, okay. you know, I've been that I've been clean, if that's right. Eh? Well, well yeah, props, yeah. man. Props. So this year. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, I, the reality is I nearly didn't make it out. So sure. um, I think out of the original kids that I that I grew up, grew up with, I think I'm one of two people that lost their life. So, you know, it was quite a serious thing. And, you know, I'm grateful not to be there anymore and have been able to you know, just sort stuff out and, so that I can take care of it that actually matter to me. For sure. Um, and then, yeah, so, I mean, right now I'm fortunate enough to, to live in the middle of the mountains between, mm-hmm. you know, between Job and Alspreit, like mm-hmm. kind of just in, inside, you know, as you get into Mkumalanga. It's a beautiful place uh, to live, I, you know. Yeah, like, so, I mean, obviously. If we can get that back going. We're back. Yeah, just hold on a sec. Let me see if we can get it going again. Um, we had a bit of a, a freeze on us. Let's see if we can get it back going. Yes, I think we got it back going, dude. Sweet. So, so, so sorry. Just uh, we were we were on the the um, the the topic of, you know, that was a part of your life. You moved on and you managed to. You've been clean for a long time now. So, so what happened then? Oh, just normal life, eh? So, you know, at the end of the day, I started to, you know, just have the ability to work on my craft the musician and, and get better mm-hmm. and practice and start to you know kind of institute like principles of discipline in, in, into my life you know what i mean mm-hmm. um especially with the music because i think that you know with i suppose with with for me with hollywood and um you know with the music the the media's representation of the music industry that a lot of us grow up with i think we've got a very very warped perception of what actually is like to be a musician i think a lot of people get lucky but i think or i think some people get like but i think a lot of people really 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 hard and have mm. a very fierce worth work ethic you know well that's at least my experience um so you know yeah so just kind of you know then got had the ability to just you know kind of build momentum i think is a good way of describing it instead of constantly having that momentum stolen sure sure no 100 how's it how's the bandwidth doing now yeah no you're good you're good you're 100 percent. you're 100 percent. okay I'm, I'm we're just, good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just giving it a check every now so, and again I mean, sure so yeah i mean and obviously you know like with with a lot of people everyone i suppose you know mm. music plays such an important part in your life and it plays sure. such an important part in in how you build memories and how you connect back to your past so to speak um and i think that that's always been such an important important element of music in my life um you know i don't want to speak for others but i'm sure that their 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 perspective won't be too dissimilar Mm -hmm. in in the reality that you know i mean if you take your favorite tv program something you loved as a kid i mean to kind of recite an episode by heart would be quite difficult but sure. you know to 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 cite the music the theme music and it you know you get that pretty quickly and all of a sudden you call back to when you were a kid when you remember the tune yeah, um, and it just right. has you know that just shows the ability of music to to really just kind of 
you know, cement things and, and bring you back. So, I mean, you know, music has just been such an important part of, of my life in that sense. Um, for sure. You know, and the greatest thing that I can do as a musician is try and, and do that for, for, for others. That's, that's, that's great, man. Now, now tell me what, before the Amblers, you obviously been, you've been part of previous projects. Um, what, what projects got, where did you start? What, what was the first band that you, you got into? Jeez. I think my very, very first band was actually called Plastic Sandwich. I think. Plastic Sandwich. I and, like um, it. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, um, well, uh, you know, I think that's when you, when you're young and you're just jamming everyone else's songs and trying to kind of find something cohesive with, mm -hmm. with other people your age as, as children. Yeah. And then it just kind of went from there. I mean, I've done a lot of solo things. I've played with a lot of other artists. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard to kind of rattle off and, and ramble off. But I mean, I, I've been at it for quite a long time, okay. um, you know. Well, let me ask you a diff let me ask you a, a question that that that's kind of similar in that in that vein. But um, so, as opposed to the projects that you were involved in, what um, what were your influences? Because obviously, you, you're the Amblers is. It's kind of blues rock and uh, love seriously lovely groovy drums and stuff like that so you obviously have that kind of or i mean you may not have done it in in your previous projects but that seems to be the obviously a very very strong influence so in terms of that that genre or any other genre what were your main influences in terms of getting to learn an instrument yeah, etc yeah i think that i mean when i when i started playing guitar i mean I think, you know, bands like um, Nirvana, Metallica, Alice in Chains, Counting Crows. I yeah. listen to a lot of Counting Crows. I mean, Adam Duritz, just as a songwriter and as a poet, as a lyricist, mm. just mm. Abso as absolutely blew my mind. Mm. Um, um, and that grunge era. And I mean, you know, I didn't really get into Metallica, but mm -hmm. Metallica Black, I absolutely gorged myself on, wow. on that album. Um and a, a lot of my first, the, the first songs that I learned to play were mm -hmm. really off the Black Album. Um, okay. And that kind of thing. And then, you know, and that's also just kind of pop culture. It's great music, so you kind of get into it. But I think that as, you know, you start to feel more serious about music, I think then your influences and your real musical taste really starts to kind of develop. And for me, it definitely went the blues way. Okay. Um, and, you know, you know, blues is such a huge kind of genre when you think about sure. it because it really it really touches into so many other genres mm -hmm. as well from just everyday rock and roll to proper blues to like you know folk to like appalachian country you know like mm. in the appalachian mountains like that first traditional yeah. country i mean i have such a wide range of musical um like affinities but sure. i mean i think when i'm writing music and jason and i are putting music together mm -hmm. it's really just that raw blues kind of thing sure but um, i do think you take i mean that, com I, that that comes out yeah. yeah well i mean i'm not going to pronounce on your music and tell you how but i definitely can tell um especially in the vocal lines i mean you've got very blues rock uh nice groovy drums and stuff but when you when you um some of the the songs specifically you can tell that there's that that um you know i'm not going to say counting crows but a counting crow-esque type of vocal style in parts i'm not saying everywhere but you can tell that that there is somewhat of a yeah um, sure a, a variety in terms of the vocal oh, oh. styles yeah like a whale <laughs> <laughs> i always no. found uh, yeah like a, a whale like ah oh, yes yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's got to be there. I mean, I think that oh, I love um, Counting Crows a lot. Sure, and sure. Um, Yeah, and and so, yeah. So, I mean, I think that I have a, personally have a huge affinity to any kind of folk and any kind of traditional folk. Yeah. I mean, even the new the new styles of folk are amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all of, all of those blues ranges, ranging from traditional blues right up to how blues has progressed and touched all, so many other genres yeah. as well. Um, I think, you know, every different genre or every different musician – that inspires me, you know, you know, between all of them, you know, Led Zeppelin, Jack White, 
um, Queens of the Stone Age, the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Mm. There's so much rootiness in, in those blues influences and those sounds, yeah. um, you know. Um, and, yeah, I love that kind of Well, I think actually, I think... Um, it's something that can... Yeah, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Um, but... Oh, no, not at all. I was just going to say that it's definitely something that that connects with me. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I was just about to say your 2017 release, The Dustling Man, I think it's called. Um, is that that is correct, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so there was um a specific the a specific sound on the guitars that I get that 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 uh, stoner fuzz, you know what I mean? Um on the guitars, yeah. high mid-range, lots of fuzz um with with a with a nice uh, beat following it and stuff so i can definitely tell that 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 was definitely a, pro prog a progression like you say um with with all those bands I, I really love that style um so now tell me uh, with other bands around the scene who who stands out for you in terms of the blues uh, uh kind of genre that that you guys are doing well i'm not I'm, I'm not saying that you guys are doing just like you have your unique sound i mean it's just two of you. I think that's amazing. We'll get to obviously Jason a little bit later in his project, but I just wanted to get a background with ju about Justin right now, just before we get into the to the nitty gritty. So, any any other bands that, yeah, that, that so, on your radar? I mean, I think I think that changes a lot because um, I think that there are so many South African bands. So, it 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 all depends for me. You know, who, who's bringing who's releasing music if, yeah. if you know what i mean but i think that bands that i think that like are i'm interested in the moment is is like i love the medicine dolls um i think the the album that they've just released is absolutely amazing although you know they're not a blues band but mm. the, but i mean there's again so many well shout out the medicine there, but dolls. i love the medicine i got them on yeah, next week absolutely i'm flipping i love the medicine dolls awesome. uh, their music is absolutely amazing um fantastic you know, and then obviously, you know, the other the other bands that, that you know, are kind of, I won't say in our genre, but um, in our sphere, if, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, um, like, it's very hard to, to, to not get, you know, your words mixed up. But I was kind of meaning like, you know, there are certain bands that play together and that, uh, you know, have their odd shows together and stuff. The bands that you've kind of played with that, that you really dig kind of vibe. But, you know, okay. articulation is the key to everything. <laughs> so, sure. yeah, sorry, I might, may not have articulated that question too too well. But, uh, yeah. Sure. Kind of, so, I mean, I mean, go for it. you know, the kind of bands, I yeah, I suppose that, I mean, if I try and think that ba bands that we've, as the Amblers have shared the stage with, I mean, um, you know, we, we've we've played shows with Georgetown. We've played shows with Gunshot Blue. Um, we've played shows with Shadow Club. We have who else have we shared stages with? Um, um, Vonnebuem. You know, it's been oh, such awesome. a kind of uh, you know whatever the show is, and you know whoever the lineup is, and yeah. how the bookings are going to work, and and that kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. obviously we had planned really to get on the road as much as possible this year, and then you know COVID happened and and that kind of thing. But we were very grateful to like kind of kick off, uh, um, you know, a, a great tour of the Cape, um, like a mini tour of the Cape, mm -hmm. just as we we got home, just as the lockdowns hit. So it was like um, March time. And I mean, here. you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. It was we played Aces of, and I think Spades it was 13, and all that 14, jazz. 15. We, yeah, we oh, played man. Aces. We played uh, Lucky House, guys. House of Machines. Oh, I say um, House yeah, of Machines is also yeah, an amazing it's, place it's, to play. Yeah. So, and I mean, what's happened to Aces uh, is just so sad. I Travesty. mean, there was such a, a, a light on the mountain, um, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean... And then obviously you've you've got you know the the pros I suppose that you work with you know mm -hmm. and those are obviously the kind of bands that are are in our circle in our management you know what I mean those yeah. people that you connect with like you For know sure. uh, Chase Bain from Facing the Gallows oh, you know he's yeah. done all of our videos you know we love him a lot from Capital Collective yeah Capital Collective um, and then you it. know you just you just have those people that you connect with and and then that kind of thing so. 
Awesome. I hope okay. I've answered your question as One hundred percent. So, so just dovetailing on the chase uh, vibe, did he do Birds and the Bees and Radio Old Mo? Mo, sorry. Yes, yes, oh, yes, rad. he did. Okay, awesome, man. Yeah, that he's been on fire with his his, his music video skills of late. Eh? Uh, the black yeah, and super talented. Yeah, super talented dude. Ah, uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, having a couple of good nights with him. So yeah, we we've <laughs> we know each <laughs> other, we know each other pretty well. They've actually bunked in this room uh, on all the couches and stuff uh, when they first came down there. There's a post up there that uh, they supported my band when we first released our, our debut EP. So those guys have always got a close place in my heart. Um, but then, yeah, they're super, super rad guys. Super rad dudes. Yeah, I know for sure. And, and you know what? The, the hard work's paying off for them for sure. Um, now, just let's let's get into the, the Jason uh, scenario. Obviously, you've done all your things and collaborated with, with a bunch of artists and uh, up till now and then. Uh, obviously wh when did the the amblers first uh, come about as a as a unit as a band in 2017 so basically i mean jason and i have known each other for a long time mm -hmm. um and just as, as musicians that have been playing for a long time um you know you, you connect if you sure. if you know what i mean like so you know i think jason and i met when he was drumming for the black cat bones yes. and you know we shared we shared the stage with the bones um at a couple of shows if i think about it now i don't think with other projects that i was involved in and, and that kind of thing yeah. and uh, i don't think I, I ever shared the stage with the black cat bones when jason wasn't the drum mm. so okay. um you know, and we obviously, we, we kind of got to know each other and, and that kind of thing. And then in 2017, you know, we just had an opportunity to, um, yeah, to record. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Jason and I have, have never had any unrealistic expectations um, for the Amblers. Uh, mm -hmm. We still don't. Um, we're really, really grateful for all of the support that we have been given uh, since 2017. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it really has just been something that Jason and I enjoy doing. We love making music together. Um, we love making the music that we want to make. And we've been grateful that people have been able to connect with that music thus far. For sure. um, you know, we are, not, yeah, we are not the kind of guys that like to or going to play, play to the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that in, in, in that sense, if you know what I mean, we're not going to go and we, we have a desire to go and make the music that we think people are going to like we we want to make music that m means something to us mm -hmm. is real to us and and therefore we just super grateful that thus far there have been people that have enjoyed it as much as what we have made it and we're super 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 privileged to be able to say that um for sure you know I and mean, we're still doing it like that yeah i mean i think that that's fantastic dude uh listen when i first listened to to the first bit of music i mean that's completely right down my alley i mean i i thoroughly enjoyed the first listen in fact let me give you a fun fact while we were sitting listening to rowdy old mo on spotify the album my girlfriend was sitting there and i was like no but i mean you're enjoying this she said she's sitting there bumping her she says no i've just sent the 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 album to my cousin who will love this <laughs> so it's got that effect man i mean i was just like i was rocking yeah. on and, and and enjoying a good old time i mean obviously i've i've saved the album and and uh, like i said i mean i'm an instant fan and listen i don't pander to the audience um i you know i, I will be honest and i'm being dead honest i absolutely love th that album and i haven't gone into a deep dive of the rest of the albums i chose uh, Radio Old Mose because it was the it was the latest uh, album release. Am I correct? Sure. Yeah. Yes, and, it, it and was. I, it I love it, man. So, so I know obviously Jason and he's been a, a part of uh, um, a few projects as well. I mean, I've seen him. He 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 started a project with some where we, where he was doing um, sample pad stuff, and that blew up. Yeah, that's. One... Uh, yeah, I, I, it's I called of... Okay. Yes, that's it. That's it. And I was absolutely yeah. amazed. I mean, yeah, he, he was, he's a beast. He's yeah. a beast on that machine. Yeah, I know, yeah. for sure. I was just like, I'm amazed. I mean, 
the amount of time and and effort and and skill that it takes to be able to and, master one of those and things memory and memory just memorizing yeah. that stuff. <laughs> well yeah. yeah i mean you've got to memorize i mean all the pads look the same they don't have labels on them <laughs> so it's it's i can yeah. imagine it to be uh, something super um hectic to 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 get used to and to to master so well um so he's obviously a a very passionate musician and and more so you know he he dabbles in a little bit more in terms of the percussion side of things and and getting involved in the sampling and all that kind of stuff which is also getting with the times but it seems as though you guys have a nice chemistry in your music and and i really like the it's it's i love it man so so tell me um when you guys write a song, do you will you just go get into the jam room and you'll play a couple of riffs and he'll just go along and and you guys will will figure out how how to go from there. How does the writing process work? Yeah, so I mean, obviously it's as organic as what we can make it, but I mean there are limitations. Um, you know, he's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. Sure. Um, he travels a lot. I travel a lot, and um, you know we've we've got to make it work. So most times, what will happen is I'll have an idea that'll be really really rough, and that idea will be given to Jason, mm -hmm. and Jason will then start to work on on that idea as far as you know, because Jason, again, as as you mentioned earlier, there's mm -hmm. just two of us, and there will never not just two of us um you know and we that's something that we're very sure of that mm -hmm. doesn't mean we won't collaborate with other people mm -hmm. but there will never be more people in the amblers than jason and i and sure. there will never be a diff a different amblers to jason and i so sure. basically for example if jason had to decide he, he no longer could that's do it, it the amblers would no longer sure. it would no longer exist yeah. um you know um, because I like, it, that. It, I like that philosophy it really is us it's, you cannot it's about recreate us. chemistry 100 yeah. percent. it's no um and so you know and then jason he really is the heartbeat and the skeleton of our sound you know and um you know jason then will then start to put together you know what he feels the rhythm and, and the beat and heartbeat of that song is and then we will actually start to really kind of arrange the song from mm -hmm. there um we keep it super super organic um so up until now um, we have no intent of changing it, but you, you never know. We're not put in a box either. But up until now, every single song that the Amblers has ever recorded from the beginning of the Dustling Man right to Sitting 100 Year Old, every single instrument in any one of our songs has only ever been tracked beginning to end. So, oh, wow. Uh, okay. They are so whole you, takes. Okay. They, they, oh, wow. Yeah. That, okay. That's huge. Yeah. That. Yeah, they're all single takes. Wow, um, and, okay. And just to clarify, because a lot of people, when they hear, a lot of people, when they hear it, it's not a live album, okay? So, um, because obviously we live would then takes, promote yeah, it as I mean, a live album. Yeah. But what we mean by single, 100%. So basically what it is, is that any drum, any drums that you hear on any one of our songs are not chopped up. They're not composites. So the vocals are not like, the very best syllable of the very best phrases of the 10 takes built up into one take. Guitars, neither, no instrument. Every single instrument that you hear is one take. It's a seamless take from beginning to end. Um, there are no cuts. There are no chops. There are sure. no edits. There are no anything Rad. like that. I love that. Some sure to get it right. It took like 50, of, take, yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 takes to get it, if you know what I mean. But... But the take that got into the song was the very best that either he or I could do in one single moment of time on that day. Wow. It, and and that's how we have approached every every single bit of our recording and no intention of changing that. But why we chose to do that was and why we choose to work like that is that is a moment of time in our lives and that is something that we can offer. So, you know, when you hear Jason drumming on a specific song or me playing guitar and singing, you know, that vocal delivery or that guitar track or that solo, like that day, that moment, what's the very best <laughs> I could do from beginning Amazing. to end and the same for Jason. And we felt that by doing that, we were, we were actually 
giving people a moment of time in our lives that was uninterrupted. We were sure. offering them something from a perspective without chop, chopping it up and having mm, it be, mm. you know, the very, you know, it, it, it's difficult for other people to hear, but there are a lot of mistakes. Sure. No, and, no, I hear you. you know, that's what makes our songs perfect to us. Yeah. Because you get um, those nuances. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, I'm 100%, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a huge I'm a I'm a fan of that and then that that makes you know I mean for a lot of people that wouldn't make the 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 music more special to them but for someone like me I mean I play um I've done takes I've done parts you know to be able to you know if you're listening and if you're a musician you'll know you'll know <laughs> that if you try and do a take from start to finish it's a task it's an absolute task um but you know to to do it start to finish and to make sure that that's your best take and you will do it as many times until you get it perfect i mean that's that's admirable um because obviously that that's a lot of time uh, time it takes to to you know get the the finished product and stuff instead of chopping it up into parts and, and taking shortcuts um but that that's another yeah i mean that's amazing dude i mean i love that um but like your epk your epk says it's raw but not unpolished that's just because of like shit loads of practice yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bring it over and over and over and yeah. over again yeah no but i love that man that's 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 awesome kudos kudos to you for doing that and then, and i think that's a pretty cool philosophy to have now the next thing i wanted to ask you dude is is now it's a two-piece you've now mentioned that that you don't take any sort of vocal or instrumental shortcuts and that's the best that you'll get on the day but now in terms of you guys and i've heard the recordings and stuff and and this or oh, some some people would might find this a sensitive question but you you didn't you do not have, do not use bass in your recordings yeah no yeah we don't have a and, bassist uh, yeah no but that's what i'm I, that's what i love about it is that you're two members of the band You've got two instruments and you use those two instruments as well as your vocals to, to, and that gives also a, an authentic feel to the music as well, because you can see it, that it's just you and Jason. Yeah, sure. And I mean, we, we, we don't want to, we don't want to do people and we also want to be able to play. <laughs> um, we want to be able to play those songs as best as what we can. Sure. I mean, obviously when you release, when we, when you're releasing music, we also want to sound like our albums. Sure. Um, you know, we want to be able to play our songs differently, um, and arrange them slightly differently, but we want to just do it with him and I, we don't want to do it with other people. Um, offense to anyone else. We like playing together and, and that's what the Amblers is to us. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, so obviously, you know, we do add backing vocals and, you know, different elements um, to our recordings, but they they never there to kind of take away from the fact that there is just a guitar sure. and a set of drums. Sure. And, like, I mean, when, you, when you're ripping a no. solo, you've got to have the backing uh, rhythm guitar. Yeah. So obviously yeah. those things, you know what I mean? So, um but but yeah, but I mean that's as far as we'll we'll go. I mean we're not going to put a bass in um, if if J if either Jason and I can't play it simultaneously, so mm, to speak, mm. live and blew it off. We're not going to put it into the song. But a one, but you know, but you also make it so in the sense that that your your kick drum sound in a lot of your music that is your bass, man. Yeah, we work really hard on that kick. <laughs> yeah. No, and, but um, I mean, at least someone, people take notice to say, that's why, because you don't, you know, the kick compensates and then you've got the mid-range tones of the distorted guitars and, and, and all that kind of stuff that all work together that, that doesn't need a bass guitar. Or, or for your music yeah, doesn't I mean, require I it. No, like, well, you know, and I suppose that's also because we, we are making music. I, I don't know if this makes sense, but, you know, when we're writing and we're fleshing something out, mm. we'd quickly know if it, if it doesn't work. And sure. you know what I mean? If it doesn't sound good with just the two of us. I mean, if you're standing in a room, if you guys are in a room together and you're playing and it sounds shit, it's shit. Like, <laughs> you know, um, so basically the point I'm trying to make is that we kind of we 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 work with ideas that mm -hmm. sound good 
mm-hmm. when it's just him and I. Yeah. Um, and so by the time by the time it's recorded, it works and it translates well because it's 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 had that in mind right from the beginning. For sure, for sure. No, that's amazing, dude. Um, so you've you Dustling Man came out that that came out that was your first release. A um, couple of releases go by. You do some singles, then you then you release uh, Ratty Old Mo. I think it was the end of two thousand and eighteen, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Or, or some, yes, somewhere it, in, yes, it was. Yeah, and and so my next question is: 2018, 2019, you must have had a very strong performing year, going out and about, performing shows, and all that jazz, right? Yeah, we did. We did as many shows as as, as what we could. I mean, obviously, it's never. It's, the Amblers is still a really, really young band, and um, it's never easy breaking a band. Um, and Jason and I are certainly in it for the long run. We sure. have, you know, because, you know, I think Jason and I have both um, gotten to the place where we d- we don't need anyone's permission um, without sounding arrogant. That That is not mm-hmm. my intention at all. So let me finish my thought before anyone that's listening thinks I'm a dick. <laughs> but we don't. Carry on. Um, we're not making music for anyone. But we're making music for everyone, you know, if, if that makes sense. It so makes all the sense. If, if, if we don't have the support of anybody, it's not going to stop Jason and I from making music. We, we, don't, we don't need anyone's support. Do you love the support? Are we doing it for people? Absolutely, we are. I mean, that's the heartbeat of the whole thing. But for that reason, if, if Mongrel or Just Music, for example, say tomorrow, we're done with you guys, mm-hmm. It's not gonna. It's not gonna stop us from continuing to sure. music. If, if that makes sense, we will continue to go. And I think we've both worked really, really hard in our individual lives to be at the place where we can do that. Sure. Um, you know, we we don't need the backing of anybody else. All we need is people to enjoy the music, and we'll keep making it. Um, you know. So you know that that is very, very freeing, and 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 that was something that was very different for me. As, as a young musician, because I think, um, you know, as someone in their late teens and early 20s, all you care about is being famous and being seen and being praised. And you know what? That shit fades really, really, yeah. really quickly. And more importantly for me, I mean, I can't speak for Jason, mm. but for myself, I think that I realized very, very quickly that what I was chasing was an, um, like a bottomless hole. It, it, mm. it didn't get me what I wanted. Um, any regard um, mm. and so you know and and I need to look inside to kind of solve that that was my own fault and my own immaturity and my own deception um, you know you also don't people aren't stupid that's one thing that I love about people is people aren't stupid and music doesn't lie so when when you create something that is inauthentic even though the song is great, people struggle to connect with it um, because there's just something lacking. Um, yeah. And and you know and, and it's great it's great when when people you know for us when people say things like you know the sound that we have and the music that we make is authentic and that's how they perceive it. You know, that's that's amazing for us. We couldn't hope for anything more than that. Um, you know, so we're just going to keep going and we're going to keep making music and we're going to keep trying to do it in the most authentic way that we can um you know because that's what we want to do um and if people enjoy it along the way like flip and hell you know what more can you ask well i think you 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 know and and i respect everything that you just said 100 percent. but i think you are one of the you know you are a group that have been fortunate and it has showed through your your previous work that you know, people are supporting. I mean, uh, you know, obviously when I, before I go and get onto an episode with some guys, I have to go check out, you know, what, you know, what the following's like and what the music's like. And, you know, you can't go in cold to something like this. And and that's one thing you, you guys, in terms of, you, you guys have got a, a, a decent following in terms of your socials and all that kind of stuff. And it seems like what you're doing is a winning formula. Plus it's your reputations from your previous projects and all that kind of stuff that, that, that assist that as well. So I, I love the attitude. I mean, 
I would love to introduce you to Sean from Meal System. He has the exact same attitude towards his music. He's, I'm, I don't need, we don't need anybody else to make music. We make music for ourselves. We make music for everyone and no one. You know, hundred percent. Like, I mean, it, what else? Are, what else are we gonna do? <laughs> There's nothing else we good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's the thing. And I think that you know, when you are writing a song or you're in studio and you're doing it for those reasons because you've, I suppose, grown up a little bit, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You write, well, di- kinda, you yeah. write differently. Yeah. You play differently. Um, you interact um, with the people around you differently. Um, Jason and I have always believed, and we will most likely always believe, that, you know, relationships are everything. Everything. And, um, um, you know, we want to make sure that our relationships are intact. I mean... You know, the guys that we work with from the guys to, you know, from high C studios where we do mm-hmm. a lot of our drum backing now, um, you know, to Rogan Kelsey, who does our mastering to, you know, the people that are, are working on our mixes, um, you know, and I do a lot of the mixing well, you know, mm-hmm. because it's something that, that I do as a profession as well, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, as a mix engineer. And, you know, like, what's the point of doing anything if, you can't connect with anybody along the way. Sure. Um, whether it be, you know what I'm saying? The, I think that's what we love more than anything is just kind of connecting. I mean, if I, if I think to, if I think to the shooting of, uh, you know, the video for birds and the bees, I mean, mm-hmm. chase rocked up that morning and he was so sick. Like really, he was sick sure. and you know, we, we had we, we got him some medication and we got it into him and that man was a beast the entire day and listen I hadn't seen someone that ill you know like, obviously it was just flu but he was sick yeah and he, he didn't back down he didn't he didn't call call it in he he yeah man he flipping worked his ass off with us now now to me that shit is quality like and and that stuff matters that's dedication um, man dedication so, to your you craft. Know, but it's also just action to other people like mm. do, do you know you know what i mean i think but also i think that you know as a musician and as someone facing the gallows you know um i, I chase and, and 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 the rest of us you know the rest of the creatives are aware of how much it takes to get into that room yeah and what's it like when you get in there i mean there's a lot of money there's a lot of things involved in it you know people just don't, they parts. don't give up on each yeah that keep up on each other and, mm. and that's just incredible man because you know we we really live in a world where people just abandon each other a lot mm. these days mm. <laughs> yeah no jeez man you speak the truth you speak the absolute yeah. truth so now tell me just you know on on that note like how is you know we've been through an interesting seven seven months we've been through <laughs> <laughs> a tough time i mean for everyone the music industry's taken a hit tourism industry's taken a hit everyone's taken a hit how has how has it affected you personally and did you do anything you know with the band during lockdown how how has it been for you because i mean also it's enough to drive anybody crazy of course yeah absolutely i mean Obviously, like I said earlier, you know, we had such a touring, a touring plan for this year and it just, it just didn't work out. I mean, we started well, we, we, we played a lot of shows, uh, in the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. Um, and we had a lot of other shows booked, um, you know, of which Millipop, I mean, not Millipop, uh, what's it? Um, I don't know what said Millipop, um, uh, <laughs> Millipop. Misty Waters, Misty Waters. <laughs> yeah. M- Misty Waters. Um, you know, was Millipop, one that we were looking for. Where did really... Millipop come from? Mi- Millipop was a festival. I think Hank van um, okay. did Millipop at one stage. They, they were cool festivals, but they don't happen anymore. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but um, Misty Waters. Um, <laughs> nice. You know, so, and obviously we're still on the bill for Misty Waters. It's happening early next mm-hmm. year now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we had a hell of a touring schedule planned for this year. And I mean, that's not easy for us because. Um, you know, Jason is Bork van Black's flipping drummer. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. That is Bork, true. So you must Bork be busy. Van Bro, Bork van Black is a super, 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 super. I mean, he plays like 260 shows a year on average. I mean, like, so, 
sorting our dates in Jason's schedule is it's nuts. My, it's like nin, it's like ninja tetris. Like it, it's <laughs> you know. So yeah, so we we were a bit bummed about that, but. I mean, also you've you've got to play the hands that you're dealt sometimes. Mm, so I mean, obviously course. we just we just went to, we just went to writing. We've got a lot of songs, um, you know, in the pipeline. We'll probably be re- releasing a, a new single um, by the end of this month. That's awesome. at least our our plan. Ma- maybe two more singles mm-hmm. um, before the year is out. Um, but let, let's see. I mean. We're just trying to, you know, keep giving people music. Um, you know, it has it has been tough. Things have been slow um, in terms of e- everything. I think mm. everything has been 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 knocked, and everyone's yeah. been affected in some way. But I mean, I you know, I still feel blessed. Um, so have yeah, you done I, anything I, in I terms think... of like live streaming or live content for for the for the um, for for you know just random no. show or anything like that no we haven't done any of that you know i um, i i don't i don't know why um it's not that we didn't want to it's also not that we felt intensely compelled to either yeah sure um you know i also think that for us we are a garage type band so you know you know being just the two of us so we like being around people um and we like you know, kind of delivering our music in that sense. Not that we were against or averse to mm-hmm. to live streaming. It just, it just stars for us didn't align that way. Sure. If you know what I mean. Uh, um, I and you. I don't, I don't know why. Um, no, sure. But I'm not phased by it either. I mean, so you know, we we we've got, like I said, you know, we spent we've spent spent a lot of time in the studio, um, over you know between March and now, and um, awesome. yeah, so we're just gonna keep going. You're gonna kick kick 2021 in its ass, eh? So, what, do you have any yeah, specific plans? Yeah, we plans? hope so. Well, I first want to wait and see what happens with all these damn sock off guys that they've now released in <laughs> Egypt. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, where, what sure. happens with 2021? Yeah, yeah. Now so you just kind of playing everything. Lo- those. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I mean. I don't I don't actually know the answer to that question. I mean, we want to play as much as what we can. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, obviously in this year we've joined with Mongrel, um, you know, and are associated with Just Music and those guys have read and they've been super helpful. Um, but I think, you know, everyone's waiting for things to open up a lot more. Yeah. Um yeah. you know, and I think that we're okay waiting that out. Um sure. You know, if if we, yeah. So you know, that's just kind of how it is. Love it, man. I mean, it, that that. It, listen, it is what it is. That's what we've got to. That's the card we've been dealt. Like you, you mentioned earlier. That's unfortunately the card we've been dealt, and I suppose it's how you handle it. Um, at the end of the day, but um, so now tell me, in terms of gear, what what kind of gear? What's what's your your preferred guitar what is your number one your numero uno just coming from a little slight gearhead not not a massive gearhead but uh, i see you play you play a les paul in a couple of the videos yeah so i mean um so that guitar that you ref- that you've seen in the videos that's a, a gretch um and, and you know those kind of guitars so you know Hollow i bodies. love les pauls i do i do have a uh, no, it's not a hollow body. It's a solid body. Okay. Um, but um, you know, I, I I really love Gretsch. Um, I love their guitars. I'm not a Fender kind of guy. Um, although I, I mean, I absolutely love. I just I feel like you know the bite, mm-hmm. just that bite that I get out of a Gretsch is I can translate well on it. I mean, sure. I, I do love Tillys. I do love Tillys, but I just I don't know. Hey man, power to like you. I mean, that's your yeah, personal 100%. preference. So, Gretsch is an amazing yeah, yeah. So, damn guitar. I mean, uh, yeah. amazing brand as well. So, I mean, they make I really, amazing drums too. Yeah, really like that 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 part of of the Gretsch and and you know um, you know the Fultrons mm-hmm. um, are just great as well. I like the sound that I get from it. I mostly play as much vintage analog stuff uh, as I can. So. Okay. 
Um, that's really my sound. That's really what I like. Um, I like wires and circuitry and electricity running sure. through wires. Yes. Um, so you're not a simulator. I, I, you know, not at all. <laughs> uh, I have nothing against. What was that one? I, I have nothing against it, yeah, but sure. but not at all. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's just a kind. You know, analog is a sound that I understand. For some reason, um, I get it, uh, I feel it, and I like it. And mm -hmm. my amp, um, my, my go-to amp is a 78 Super Twin Reverb, 180 watt. I'm just looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I can. Yeah, take us on a tour, man. Maybe try. Yeah, so there's there's the twin. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the yeah, there's the twin with the U forty seven mic'd up on it. Oh yeah, you got Obviously that on it's the a shock bit of a beast. There. Oh, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, oh, it's so a I'm combo. It's just... a two by twelve combo or what? Yeah, so it's a hundred and eighty watt. Sorry, I'm I don't know why I'm struggling with this camera. It's because <laughs> no you know what? I'm watching I'm watching your screen. So it's it's not it doesn't come in the same time. Uh, okay, um, okay. So yeah, and that's kind of my go to. I run an old a vintage laney, so I split the two up. Mm -hmm. um so on my on my pedal board the two are split up so i have certain effects that go to one amp and certain effects that go to the other okay uh, and then you know obviously when i'm recording that gets recorded as a stereo channel okay um i have a couple of purpose-built um one-off um pedals uh ben benjamin craig is a good friend of mine and okay. uh i've got a cup i've got a couple of prototypes from him and uh you know and then i yeah so i i like uh, i like fuzz a lot and um, like you heard in the dustling man i mean obviously you know i love it that, I that absolutely very love it. yeah that very very mid-rangey fuzz that you hear there's it's, it's a one-off i've never seen another one benjamin is i mean he's never built another one I'm sure i'm sure that he would would build them for other people so i'm not even going to tell you what it's called so that no, people just the fact that you, just called. the fact that you said yeah. the mid-range fuzz it just gives me vindication that i actually do think that i know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. it's 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 very very high uh, i remember i remember when rogan kelsey was mastering yeah. the dustling man um you know he, he sent me a message to say you know justin i've i've really managed to tame the fatiguing mid-range <laughs> of of that pedal so but I mean, I love it. It's 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 a gated fuzz. So basically, um, and it has different filters on it. So mm -hmm. as you kind of, you can get so many different sounds out of it. And I've used it on every single album and every single song that we have kind of recorded. But mm -hmm. it's so versatile because I mean, I can change the way that that fuzz sounds um, from something really smooth and fuzzy to something really gated. And yeah. choppy and like staccato, -y, almost almost like static break. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a it's a, it's an incredible um, pedal. I love it. Fantastic. Um, man. And then obviously just the standard stuff. I, I I use a whammy. I've got a beautiful drive. I use an overdrive, like a micro amp, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of in the in the beginning of my board that I drive a lot of. You know, if I want to drive into the other mm -hmm. pedals, I don't have my micro amp on the end, my boost on the end. I have mm -hmm. my boost right in the beginning. Okay. So that, you know, if I hit the boost, I'm driving into all of the, and then I, you know, I kind of have the soft clipping kind of effect. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm also quite simple when it comes to, um, you know, my guitar tone. I know that Jason loves my guitar tone and that, and that means something to me so oh, absolutely yeah i mean listen if you guys got a synergy you guys gotta i mean you gotta love the, each other's tones man but uh yeah i gotta say just to, i mean jason's not here to 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 talk about his tones but i gotta gotta give give you guys both uh, uh props with the drum sound on 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 all of the the albums that i've heard and and the songs that i've heard is a really deep sounding kick drum a really nice reverby snare um and and really 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 nice rich sounding toms as well um it it was it, especially in you know obviously in the video it's a you can see him playing you know the drum fills and stuff and you kind of get a feel you know i, I don't know what it's i feel like 
in this day and age in 2020 people need to release a video with every song that they release <laughs> it's just so it's just so crazy man um but yeah the, I, I really really do love the drum sound of your it re they really complement each other you got the nice rich gritty mid-range sound from the guitars that 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 meet the meaty nice uh, uh beefy sound and rich sound of the drums it's it's really well done man Uh, thanks so much. I mean, yeah, we try and fill out. I mean, obviously, we've got a lot of space in the frequency spectrum mm -hmm. that we need to fill out, um, especially in the low end. Sure. Um, being just the two of us. So, you know, we we work really hard to try and do that um, with the drums. And, you know, I agree with you. We've we've been fairly successful at just getting like a really, really nice, tight sound. Cool, real, uh, dr yeah, real drum sound. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, yeah, parallel compression is a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, also, just also dovetailing what you're saying in terms of uh, you've got a lot of space to, to, to work with. But that, for me, is also super awesome. And it's something that I feel like you can take advantage of or, and that you have is that it allows certain, certain elements to cut through a lot more. Absolutely. I mean... I think from an audio engineering perspective, as well as just a musical perspective, I think space is very, very underrated. I think space in music is very important and can speak, you know, no music can speak as loud as mm. music. It all mm. just depends on where you put it and how you sure, use it. Sure. And, you know, being, being only two of us, both from an audio perspective and a music and a musical perspective, we've had to try and figure that out as best as what we can, because, um, you know, we always try and, and, and determine how, how we can do it mm -hmm. with as little as, po as little as possible. Mm -hmm. Look, simple yet. And effective. that's challenging. Simple yet effective, but yeah. to getting to, to get that, to that, I understand is, is a, is a task in itself um but but the fact that you that you do do it is is it's it's rad i mean i just think the, the dynamic between it's almost like i'm gonna take my telly i'm gonna go to the studio i'm gonna call my drummer we're gonna go there we're gonna have a jam and just also basically what i'm trying to say is isn't it so much easier to have two members of, of a band as opposed to three four five because it's just two people to agree on, 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 you know, certain things. For me, it definitely is. Um, yeah. I, if I think about the other bands that I've been a, a part of, mm -hmm. um, and I, I have been fortunate enough to have been blessed to have been able to play and experience a lot of incredible musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even those that weren't, pros so to speak you know i'm just really really mm -hmm. good musicians that do other things um i, I think the thing that i've certainly experienced af affect um things more than any other thing is, is people themselves mm -hmm. so yeah i absolutely agree that the more the more people you throw into something the more complex the dynamics that thing becomes for sure absolutely man That's... so we are super happy just being the two of us we need two votes if we don't have two votes, it's a split vote, yeah. which means we need to vote again. And well, we just I mean, keep voting until we both vote the same <laughs> way. And then... <laughs> who's who's the more dominant personality? I, I don't know. You know what? Somehow, fortunately, Jason and I, just we've always just, just really, jumped. really seen things the same way. Yeah. And yeah, we've just seen things the same way. We have really, really seldom... Um, and if either of us have e ever had a concern about a song, about a sound, about, about a decision that needs to be taken, you know, the person that's brought up the concern has been right. If you know what I'm saying, I mean, we've really had such a great flow and a workflow in our relationship to one another within the Amblers that we've never, it's never gotten to that. Yeah. Um, we've always just kind of, it's always just made sense. For sure, dude. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, that's almost like, I almost feel like a sense of jealousy in the fact that you guys have a 
just that click you know um and it is easier like you say with two votes um you know that's and i think that's another thing that a lot of people can can learn from is that that you know it's it's a matter of you have to be on the same page and and sometimes you know it's just you know it's just better that there's there's two people making the decisions <laughs> um but you, you know i i'm not speaking from from ex- like personal experience or, any, or anything or maybe i am who knows but um <laughs> just uh the the fact that you have a dynamic between the two of you that you're able to carry through to the music to the live performance etc it just it just seems that though if 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 there's two people on the same page it seems like it it it's almost set to have more longevity if if you kind of get what I'm saying, I don't kind of, kind of rambling in a, in a way, but yeah, I just like the fact oh, that I'm with you 100%. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. I, Carry I, on, sorry. I, I feel super. Yeah. I feel super blessed for it. Man. Yeah. Um, really like, um, and like I was saying earlier, I mean, Jason and I, we have no intention of, of stopping mm-hmm. making music. Um, and we're not gonna, um, you know, and, it is easier for us because there's just us um and you know and whether we decide to you know ramp up the production or just have a single microphone in a room with the drum kit you know what i mean yeah it's still gonna sound like us and we don't care like if that's what we want to release that's what we're going to release because um no we're no longer at the place where we care yeah for sure i mean listen i mean i know i know i hear what you're saying and and it's 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 almost like when you said you're like oh you know the listeners might you know oh but i completely understand that this is something that comes with experience and age yeah look i mean i I think that again like not wanting to sound like a dick but i I absolutely (laughs) mean i absolutely mean what i'm saying and i and i really wish that revelation so to speak uh on younger musicians sooner than later is as soon as long as you play gallery you're not worth anything Mm -hmm. to anybody Mm -hmm. um you know and that doesn't mean there aren't musicians who are super 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 successful that Mm -hmm. play to the game gallery because they are mm. but i don't know uh, that turned me into a, a like a set of dry bones to be mm-hmm. quite honest mm-hmm. and you know sure. i don't know if there's anything worth making music that you hate sure i mean i think i think essentially for the listeners essentially would be take the me- message and the spirit in which it is intended sure you know like it is what it is we make music for us whether it you know tickles your fancy or not we love it we hope you love it absolutely and so excited when you do yeah for sure exactly 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 dude this has been such an education i've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it man um so 2017 to 2009 2020 yeah man absolutely sorry and there seems to be a slight delay on the on the audio but um you know it's it's been so so rad chatting to you uh, i hope that the next time that we get together maybe we can get jason in in the chat also um there's something that i noticed in the evk is uh, uh, do you got is it you you're not from bloemfontein are you no you're in the joe big area right yeah i'm not from bloemfontein yeah because now i saw that they, they, they called you bloemfontein Oh, uh, I think that's a blog. Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Because <laughs> I read I, I the think EPK. So. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I was just trying to just trying to see. So, so you're in the Joe Big area. So, I mean, the next time you guys in Cape Town, I'd love to do to do a, a in person. Obviously, changes the dynamic a whole bunch. And uh, have you and Jason next time when you when you tour in the Cape, it'll be amazing to have you guys around. Absolutely. I mean, we will definitely let you know. I mean, um. Like I said, I grew up in the Cape, um, so my entire family is still there. Jason's mom and dad, they live in the Cape. So, mm-hmm. you know, we've we've always got good reason to be there. Um, sure. Yeah. When did you leave Cape Town? I left Cape Town permanently. I had, listen, uh, if I didn't leave Cape Town, I, I would have died. And that's just the bottom line. I mean, Heavy. I grew up in 
in, yeah, I grew up in Devonville. I spent most of my youth on the streets of Belleville. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, man, like um, I love Cape Town. It will always be home in that mm-hmm, sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as as I'm getting older, less so. You know, less of a draw. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, in the in the years gone past, I mean. Yeah, it's hard to go home because Cape Town is home and it will never change. Sure, um, sure. But I, I needed to leave. I, I needed to leave. Uh, you know, I needed to change that environment and I built a life somewhere else mm-hmm. and I'm okay with that. Sure, um, sure. You know, yeah. so, but I mean, yeah, like I, like I said in the beginning, my, my childhood was super, super rough and okay. not, not to do with anything with my family. Yeah. All my own choices, yeah, my, yeah, own, yeah. my own mistakes um my own mistakes and that kind of thing but but yeah so you know we've always got a good reason because we have family to be mm-hmm. out there also yeah. cape town is just an amazing amazing musical heritage sure um in our country and i mean you know there's nothing like a cape town crowd <laughs> yeah i just hope it, um the live in the music scene and all that kind of stuff kind of ships up uh and 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 gets gets our acting together i mean look it's not that we had a choice but uh, you know, a lot of travesties like sure. aces and spades closing, Mercury closing, uh, lots of other restaurants and all that kind of stuff going under as a result of this bloody pandemic. So uh, it's we we are Cape Town is in a building phase at the moment, um, and you know it's going to take some time for us to 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 get that all up and running again. But I do see live shows are being organised and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I wish them all the best in that endeavour. And also, I see see Joburg bands are starting to get out and about again. And, you know, regardless of the 250 cap, they're getting out, they're getting it done. They want to showcase their music. People are frothing to get back onto st- on stage. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough that when it comes to, to doing this podcast, I still kind of get that same little bit of a rush of a live uh, show. Thereafter, at least I'm not, uh, the only difference is I'm not sweating. <laughs> after the show so sure. like, yeah I, I, do hear kinda, you. I do kind of get a satisfaction out of also hearing stories from you know seasoned musicians guys like you who have uh you know been around the block and seen some shit um you know and i, I love to hear your stories and and your story in particular it, it's fascinating and uh not only do I wish you all the best personally, but I, I wish all the best for the Amblers. It's been an education, the Amblers. Um, I, was, I wasn't I was familiar with the band prior to, to Warren hooking us up. Um, I had slight knowledge of, of uh, Jason with the Black Cat Bones and all that kind of stuff prior. But I'm so thankful for this podcast because I get to discover music like this and people like you. So, so Justin, thank you so much for joining the show. The show. I couldn't be happier to be chatting to you. I cannot wait to chat to you again with your partner in crime, the conspiracy to your theory, Jason Hine. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. The honor and the privilege was all mine. Thank you for spending some time with me. 100%. Um, any parting words for listeners, uh, your, your, your fan base, anything you, you want to get off your chest? Where can they follow you? Where can they find your music? And uh, obviously, you can find everything on YouTube with, 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 uh, with the Amblers. But, but any parting words there, Justin? Yeah, I think to our fans, I mean, we're always just so grateful. Um, you know, if it wasn't for the people that support us, we wouldn't... Um, it's not that we wouldn't be doing it, you know. It takes away that little bit of fire, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, we we want pe- we want people to hear and experience our music, um, you know. And so for those people that that do, you know, support us and and are our, our fans, um, you know, we love them. We are deeply, deeply appreciative of, of their time, their, you know, the resources resources that they they spend for listening to our music, for taking their money and paying it for anything that we do. I mean, we are so, so, so grateful for that. And, you know, just to everyone, you know, might be listening and might, and might hear this, you know, go out and support the bands in your area. Um, 100%. You know, at the end of the day, they need the public to support them. They need the public to go out to their shows. And, um, you know, as you have just realized with, not knowing who we are, for example, or were, for example, there are a lot of 
incredible bands in mm-hmm. this country and yeah, a lot of exceptional it. musicians that make really 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 good music um so sorry i just need to switch a reminder off there because <laughs> um, no, no i'm kind of on my phone it's like in the center of my screen but yeah no but yeah, man go out to a show to our fans we flip and love you thank you so much we'll be releasing some new music before the end of the year and yeah thank you so much for having me on your show man i really appreciate it thank you so much man that that that's awesome i mean i've still got all the questions in the world but we'll save that for the next time we're going just over an hour um but check out the amblers on youtube they've got some awesome videos up there birds and the bees uh birds and the bees and uh um oh geez ratty old mo was 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 the ones that i that i saw today flipping awesome music videos Go check them out. Go check them out on Spotify. They've got a lot of music up there on the on the music streaming platform. So, thank you so much, Justin, for joining the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, my my me changing my mind every two minutes whether I want to do pre recorded or live. But baby, I'm so happy that we did this live today because it just gave me that much more energy. So, thank you so much for joining the show, and we'll see you soon. And send my regards to Jason, dude. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Sweet, my man. Everybody, that is Justin Swart of The Amblers. Um, awesome episode, man. Uh, I really, really thoroughly enjoy that. You know, bandwidth, sometimes you'll have a bit of issues. Um, I see some people commenting on the lights and stuff this evening, so I'm very stoked uh, that you guys are digging the vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm stoked. So, oh, I see. Love the lighting. Thanks, Mark. Uh Art Pereira also says, wow, check the lights. If I hear Mr. Jones one more time, I'll scream. I know that song when, when Just Ginger, uh, not Just Ginger, uh, Counting Crows did it. It just blew up again because, I mean, it was, an, it was a cover. Hope Punk Records, is that? Is that Gideon from Hope Punk Records? What's up, dude? Uh, what's up, Papa G and Justin? I sent you a submission if you still do that. Frothing at the cash to get on stage. Hell yeah, Art. Do tell me about it. Like I said, guys, sorry about the short notice for this show. Um, especially if you're watching it live. If you're watching it back, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I prefer these things, uh, doing these things live because it's just, it's, it's what I'm used to now. Um, I'm not trying to cut corners. I just like the live interaction. Be it if there's two people, five people, ten people in the chat. I just, I just dig that that kind of vibe. So, thank you guys so much for for watching the show. I really, really appreciate it. Um, subscribe to Papa G's House. Um, follow me at Papa G House, uh, Papa G's House on Instagram and Facebook, and at Papa G, well, Papa G's House podcast on YouTube. Hit a subscribe on that subscribe button hit the notification bell but it's great to be back i love you guys thank you so much um for joining the show i hope you enjoyed that chat with justin of the amblers i look forward to having him back again soon but this is papa jesus episode 65 with justin of the amblers until then we say peace That's where we're going.